Tipu Sultan is often credited in our history textbooks as a secular ruler of Mysore who fought against the British in the late 1700s. While fighting the British is true, the secular part is balanced propaganda planted in history textbooks. Tipu Sultan was one of the most ruthless Islamic invaders in South India. There have been several recorded instances of Tipu's army forcefully converting, raping and kidnapping Hindus on his orders. Many temples are recorded to have been demolished under his reign. If Aurangzeb was the most fanatical Muslim king who reigned on Mughal throne in Delhi at the start of 18th century, his counterpart, who matched him in both bigotry and cruelty in South India at the close of the same century, was Tipu Sultan. Aurangzeb inflicted untold atrocities on Hindus, their way of life, their traditions, and their place of worship over a long period of 50 years. But Tipu Sultan inflicted the same kind of barbarism on Hindus in just 17 years. Aurangzeb had almost all of India as a playground for his fanatical cruelty. Hindus in Delhi, Agra, Rajasthan, Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, Gujarat, Kashmir, Punjab, and Haryana bore the extremities of his fanaticism. However, Tipu held sway over large parts of Karnataka, few regions of Kerala, Tamil Nadu, and Andhra Pradesh. Within this comparatively small area, he managed to hoist every kind of brutality imaginable in such a short span of time. His 17-year-old regime was a single panorama of military, economic, and religious terror as far as Hindus and Christians to an extent were concerned. He raised entire cities literally to ground and depopulated them. In 1788, Tipu marched into Kodagu and scorched entire towns and villages. Mir Hussain Kermani, Tipu's courtier cum biographer, describes how the raid resulted in the smoldering of scores of villages in Kushalpura, today's Kushalnagar, the like Kaveri, Madhikeri, and other places. In a letter to Ranmat Khan, the Nawab of Karnul, Tipu gloats how he took 40,000 Kurgis as prisoners and forcibly converted them to Islam and incorporated them with Ahmadi Corps. Already a thinly populated country, Tipu's brutal raid, followed by the large scale prisoner taking, depopulated Kurg of its original inhabitants to a severe extent. To Islamize Kurg, he forcefully transported about 7,000 Muslim families belonging to the Sheikh and side sex to Kurg from elsewhere. The intensity of Tipu's raid was so terrifying that hundreds of temple pujaris fled to Mandalore along with their families. Worship came to a permanent halt in hundreds of temples. Some were covered with leaves in order to conceal their presence. When the ruler of Madhikeri heard the news of Tipu's marauding approach, he realized that the renowned Omkaneshwa temple would be destroyed. And overnight, he removed its tower and replaced it with a tomb so that it resembled a mosque from afar. The temple retains this appearance till date. Father Bartolome, a Portuguese missionary in his chronicles, provides us a first-hand glimpse into Tipu Sultan's atrocities. An army of 30,000 barbarians who butchered everybody on the way, followed by a field gun unit, and behind that was Tipu, riding on an elephant behind which another army of 30,000 soldiers followed. Most of the men and women were hanged in Calicut. First, mothers were hanged with their children tied to their necks. The barbarian Tipu Sultan tied naked Christians and Hindus to the legs of elephants and made the elephants move around till the bodies of the helpless victims were torn into pieces. Temples were ordered to be burned down, desecrated and destroyed. Women were forced to marry Mahmudians and similarly their men were forced to marry Mahmudian women. Those who refused to be honored with Islam were ordered to be killed by hanging immediately. In Tipu's words, these genocides were sacred deeds in service of Islam. In his letter to Burdur Zaman Khan, a military official in his service, he writes, With the grace of Prophet Muhammad and Allah, almost all Hindus in Calicut are converted to Islam. Only on the borders of Kochi state, a few are still not converted. I am determined to convert them also very soon. I have achieved a great victory recently in Malabar, and over four black Hindus were converted to Islam. The tyrant diaries of Tipu Sultan list out some more details. 
Kozikode was then a center of Brahmins and had over 7,000 Brahmin families living there. Over 2,000 Brahmin families perished as a result of Tipu Sultan's Islamic realities. He did not even spare women and children. Tipu Sultan himself claimed to be direct descendant of Islamic Prophet Muhammad and even inscribed the following words on his ceremonial sword. My victorious saber is lightning for the destruction of the unbelievers. In 1788, Tipu had reportedly ordered his Calicut governor, Sahir Khan, to convert the local Hindus to Islam. According to Nishane Haidari, 200 Brahmins were forced to consume cow meat by July 1788. Tipu Sultan's reign ended when Mysore was defeated in the Anglo-Mysore Wars, when the Marathas and Britishers scratched the brutal tool of Tipu Sultan. There have been many malicious attempts by Marxists and Islamic historians to make Tipu gain a secular image in modern India. However, such attempts have been futile. Recently, when Congress government of Karnataka tried to glorify this barbaric murderer, staunch opposition was seen in court where most of the barbaric acts were committed. Even today, several villages in Tamil Nadu call Tipu killer of Brahmins and demolisher of temples. In a bitter memory of his murderous regime,